Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be making a D-bit engraving bit and uh, I'm going to try to do this in a way that most everyone could possibly do. Uh, if you've got a lathe and a mill uh, you can do this or even if you just have a lathe and you want to spend some time at the grinder it's it's pretty accessible. I'm going to turn a 60 degree point on this and then I'm going to bring it over to the mill and mill a flat on one side halfway through. Then I'm going to harden that. Uh, this is O1 tool steel, which is very easy to harden in the home shop. Uh, I'll heat it up to non-magnetic and then I'll quench it in oil. Anyway, if this is the sort of content that you like, please consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And let's get into it. Looks pretty good. It's nice and pointy. Time to go over to the mill. Now I'm going to mill away half of this tool. And this is a pretty straightforward uh, milling operation. I'll touch off on this side. And I'm not going to move in quite to halfway first. Um, I'm gonna move in maybe about uh, 150 thousandths instead of 1875. And that'll leave a little bit of room that I can take a measurement because I want to get this point exactly on center. Now that I have a measurement on this thickness, I know exactly how far I need to go to get to the center point. And that's why I came so far back. I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to actually hit the cylindrical part and not try to measure on this this tapered point. I'm also holding this in a collet block not because I need to do any indexing but just because that was a much more secure way of holding this. I've got it held almost all the way around the part except for the slits and that's as opposed to two tiny points of contact just holding it in the vise. Uh, I could certainly have done that but I might have dented up the part as well. Perfect. Exactly where I want to be. I've got half the bit milled away and now I'm going to go ahead and heat it up with a torch until this tip is non-magnetic and then dunk it in some canola oil. Here's my can of canola oil. I have a small rare earth magnet that I'm going to stick to the side of the can. The whole idea with heating to non-magnetic is that's at the point where the steel starts to change phases. It starts to go to a different type of crystalline structure. Uh, so once this is non-magnetic, I'll heat it up slightly past that, and then I'll go ahead and quench it. Really only concerned with the tip, by the way. Uh, I will be heating it up back here and letting the heat travel to the tip, though. This is now uh, glass hard. This is straight from the flame into the oil. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to clean off the scale. And I'm just going to use a piece of Scotch-Brite for that. And that way, when I heat this back up, I'll be able to see the uh, temper colors. 
and I want this to be a metal cutting uh, blade so I'm going to make this a uh, nice light straw color up at the tip. That's the very first color you should see when heat treating, when heating steel. Um, and of course if the steel isn't nice and shiny it's very difficult to see so it's a good idea to, to hit this with a little bit of abrasive first. That looks pretty good. Um, I also want to see just how hard this is. And I have some hardness testing files that I'm going to check that with. So let me grab those. If you've never seen these, they're really handy and quite affordable too. I think you can get this set for uh, uh, certainly less than $100. But you have six files in there. And this file right here will scratch uh, Rockwell C40 or that is what the hardness of the file is. And then it goes all the way up to Rockwell 65 uh, on the C scale. So the idea is if the 65 file scratches this, it's softer than 65. If the 60 skates across it and doesn't leave a mark, it's somewhere in between 60 and 65. Um, I'm not sure where this is gonna end up, uh, but I'll start with the 65. And it's definitely scratching it. It does seem to want to skate across it. 60 is skating pretty good, but still making a bit of a mark. I'm guessing 55 will not leave a mark at all. Yeah, that's, that's skating across it quite nicely. So it's somewhere between 55 and 60. Um, of course, there's no, um, I don't have a good way of actually testing exactly how hard it is. But for my purposes, between 55 and 60 is totally fine. In fact, I, I probably really don't need to temper it back. Um, I don't want it to be too brittle, but at the same time, it is a cutting tool for metal. And I think that's probably uh, actually softer than I need. Um, I'm going to try it as is rather than tempering it. But if I did want to temper it, uh, you can kind of see the remaining bits of, uh, of color from when I was heating it up. This is where my tongs were holding it. And it goes uh, light straw, dark brown, kind of into a purplish brown. And then you get a couple of shades of blue, a, a really nice royal blue, and then a light blue, and then it goes into sort of a gray. And those are all um, very easy to see and very easy to gauge the temperature with. Um, another good way of tempering uh, would actually be to just put it into your oven at home. Um, or even one of those little toaster ovens. Uh, they get up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll have to look up what that is in Celsius. Um, and, uh, and it's a decent way of tempering things back a little bit. In this case though, I think it's probably gonna do fine. So let's, uh, let's see what it looks like in the mill. Here's a shot of the tool after I did all the engraving, and it's just as pointy as it used to be. Of course, this is hardened steel, and I was engraving in aluminum, so I wasn't really expecting any deterioration whatsoever. But there you go, it's, it's holding up. Uh, if you wanted to, you could make this tool 45 degrees, and you could use it for chamfering. You could make it any angle you want, of course. Um, maybe a shallower angle would be a more suitable engraving tool. This one left quite a few burrs. Ideally too, you would want to have some kind of relief back here similar to a countersink, uh, but I don't have an easy way of doing that. 
um, and I don't want to try freehand grinding it and then uh, ending up screwing up the point or making the point off center. That would be bad. Uh, but yes, ideally, uh, on any kind of cutting tool, you would you would have some kind of relief so this backside isn't dragging. Uh, speaking of dragging, you could just drag this across the part as well. And I did that to get rid of some of the burrs. I just didn't put it on camera. Um, there's no reason that this wouldn't work just dragging right across the piece and, and uh, cutting the line that way. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. And over here, I've got a link to my most recent video. And right over here, I've got a link to a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Leave me any comments you've got. Check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.